base case 009, required baselines, part one. Part one of a probably multi-part series. I'm your host, Phil, with base case. Uh, these are more baselines that you need to know to function on a gig and feel comfortable. And they're fun to play, too. Uh, to demonstrate the understanding of the musical situations presented, the other night a guitarist from my combo class went to an open mic jam session for jazz musician at a local night spot. And when he told the story, he said that when he walked in, the rhythm session was a little underwhelmed to see him carrying a guitar, and they asked him, so what do you want to do? You know, probably inferring that he was wanting to open up the rock book or something, and he reeled off the tunes that we'd been working on in combo class, you know, just jazz standards, Solar and Satin Doll, and now's the time. And at that point, they became very interested, and you know why, you know, because he's speaking the language right then. You know, he knows some standards. And he played through the head of the tunes that he knew that we'd been working on this semester, and he comped through them and took some solos that we'd worked on. And it went quite well. You know, it wasn't perfect, and he told me he was very nervous. And But you have to understand, in jazz music, like all genres of music and probably all genres of art, we have a canon, you know, a C-A-N-O-N, tunes that we work with. Uh, Ted Joya, a uh, jazz scholar, in one of his books contends that there's 250 jazz standards. I'm with him on that it's because I've heard numbers that range into the thousands. But as far as workable tunes that you should know, and as a bass player at the very least knew the chord changes to, there's probably 200, 250, you'll be safe. And the more of these jazz standards that you know, the more you're going to be able to function on the bandstand and be comfortable and be a viable product on the bandstand. Now, keep in mind, like my student the other night now knows, you're likely going to play this music without rehearsing with the players you're put together with that night, you know, regardless if it's a jam session like the other night or a formal gig like playing back background music at the wine cheese event at the local hotel or even in playing the cocktail hour of a wedding reception you may not know all the guys and that's where this canon comes in handy you know knowing these intros and knowing the hits and knowing the particular bass lines and the more that you know as a bass player or any other musician the more value you add to the musical situation and the more viable you are as a musician, you know, and as someone that someone will call when they need a bass player. Now, in this episode, I have a variety. I, I have a bass line that functions as a head, and I have a couple of standard bass lines that you have to play, and I have one that's sort of a bass line slash head, and I have one that's an intro. And if you know these and have them under your fingers, you'll be good. And when I say under your fingers, I'm using the, the, the vocabulary of one of my bass professors and meant that you were able to play it without a sheet in front of you and that you could play it perfectly and you're not going to have to hunt and fish around, that you can play the line. Now, this first one is from Miles Davis's album, Kind of Blue, it's So What? And Paul Chambers' line functions as the head of the tune and is played at both at the top and at the end. So and check out my video on this on YouTube. So here's the first one, Miles Davis's So What? The bass line is played by Paul Chambers. <laughs> just sits there right in the middle of the neck if you're playing it on electric. And it's A, A, B, A form, so here it comes again. This may be in different tempos. I took kind of a sort of a slow medium. Now here's the B section. It's the same thing, just moved up a half step. Here's a little walking. 
just to start. That's what you'll start into. There'll be a little one bar break, and then the walking will start over D minor. And um, that's how it's played, and that's how they expect you to play it when they call the tune. And um, like I said, different tempos, but get used to playing that line, and it's a fun line to play. I remember my first experience with it was when I was called on it. It got called on the tune, and I was not familiar with it at all. And I remember the the pianist talking to me later. He was a, a French guy, and he said something about, you, you need to listen to the recording. And I did and learned it from that. Okay, this second one, Killer Joe. It's also an AABA form, and it's distinctive and easy, pl- easy to play bass line, but it has to happen when the head's being played. And it's a simple bass line that sits in one position, and along with the four-bar intro, you'll play the same line. Here it is, just the A sections. And just a C, going to a B-flat 7, back to C just sits there right at the end of the bass whether you're playing on upright or electric but it's a bass line that has to happen over this and it repeats itself until you get to the bridge now here's the bridge now they're in the head I'm just going to play whole notes go back to last day and there you go it's that simple too but it's got to be there if you start playing something else over those chord changes uh, it's not going to sound right, and it's not going to be what the person that's playing, the, the horn player or pianist that's playing the head, it's not going to be what they're expecting, and it's, gonna, it's not going to sound right. Now, when you get to the blowing changes, when you get to where the, the horn players and everybody else starts soloing, you can open up that line a, a bit more, and you definitely want to stay away from those whole notes on the bridge and start walking that too. But for the... The intro and the in chorus and the out chorus, you definitely want to have that simple, distinctive deep do de de don do 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 dip de de don. You've got to have that happen to make it sound like it's that you know what you're doing and you're playing the right thing. Okay. Now this next one is uh, Charles Mingus's Haitian fight song from his album Ah uh, Um. This is a great album. And uh, every you know for you, those of you who don't know, Charles Mingus was a great bass player and a great, what some people considered a great American composer. I remember some years ago, this bass line appearing on a car commercial too. Now, it, I say it functions as an intro. When it gets to the blowing changes, when it gets to the soloing, it goes to a G minor blues. Now, we explored that concept in one of the earlier episodes about blues forms, you know, blues forms that aren't your standard blues forms in there it's a minor blues but this uh this intro or in some ways ahead has to be played and has to be played right and again it's simple play fits on the bass there's a couple ways of doing it and it's one of those ones that are fun but check out the whole album so here's the uh the intro to haitian fight song charles mingus You got to go all across the bass, starting with that G harmonic. Repeat that. Sometimes a drummer will start coming in right here. Simple. Okay. Now that's kind of a pedestrian tempo. So here it is. Number four, closer to the tempo that you'll likely be expected to play it at, particularly since it starts by itself, since the bass player opens it up, be ready to go in strong with it. So here's example four, same thing, Haitian fight song, but closer to the tempo that you'd be expected to play it. I 
like I said, the second time, typically the drummer comes in. Now, how many times do you play it? Depends on the band. Sometimes the, you know, the horn players will come in with that very simple head on the third time. Sometimes they might let it lay a while. Maybe they'll let you play that line for a while, you know, or they want it. It's a very hip line, and a lot of people get very excited when they hear it. Uh, this next one, number five, it's an AABA tuning, meaning well, you play the eight bars, you play it again, and there's a bridge. And I'm going to play the A section here of uh, Dizzy Gillespie's A Night in Tunisia, which is a Latin tune, and uh, it's got a Latin feel. It's got some particularities in it when you get to the blowing changes, but right now the line, you know, that required line that don't mess around with it, learn it right, uh, here it is, and it's played like this during the A section. <laughs> back to it here we go again now simple in its own right once you get the finger and work out check out my youtube channel and the video for that i've got that's where you can lay it as an electric bass player and an upright player right there in the middle of the neck. And it's a simple fingering. And I've seen some of my students try to play this all kinds of ways, and then we settle it in. It basically fits like a shiftless pattern, as they call it in the double bass world. But like I said, it's one of those. That's somewhat of a moderate tempo. I've had to play it faster than that. And it's, a, it's done in big band arrangements. It's done in small group. I remember doing it as a duo with a guitarist, and he doubled the line with me and then took off with the melody. It functions as the the intro too. So get it under your fingers and be able to play it at quick tempos. Now, before I get to number six, let me just give you a little exposition and discourse on why you know how how it came about that we have to learn these and how I came to them. You know, and, you know, you can use fake books and real books, and you know they've got apps with all the chord changes, and those are so beneficial to bass players, and it's so beneficial when they have the melody to all musicians but i can say that it's pretty rare that i've seen a bass line written out on any of these sources usually you know like with the apps you just get the chord changes you know that that saves them from dealing with copyrights and as we all know the the real books were somewhat underground until hal leonard took them over and paid the licensing for it so uh, there's not i can't remember you know, seeing, and I, I can testify that the Night in Tunisia bass line and the Haitian Fight Song bass line and the uh, Killer Joe bass line is not in those books, but the only one that probably is that I do remember is the So What bass line. And those things are difficult to read, and you've got to figure those things out. But you must learn them. I, I can't emphasize that. And I remember one time, and this this last one will definitely reminds me, we were playing this, and it's the intro to Joe Henner's Recorder May, and I was talking to a musician, and I said, well, it's not in the fake book, and he's made it very clear that just because the bass line's not in the fake book or not in the app, that you are still, as a bass player, responsible for it, and it falls under the heading of stuff that you need to know, like something we'll get into is getting out of tunes, you know. You know, we can play through these lead sheets all day, but we've got to figure out how we're going to get, in, get into them, which is, you know, the intro... You know, I'm always thinking about Parker's uh, recording of all the things you are. That's got that very significant bass line. That you have to know. And then getting out of tunes, you know, which doesn't always require a specific bass line. Sometimes it's just a matter of taking the last four bars and playing it three times. That's what I teach my students. And it's a quick and easy way to get out of this. So this next one, the intro to Joe Henderson's Recorder May, it's from his album, Page One. You, you should check this album out. This is the record he did with Kenny Dorm, and it has Blue Boss on it. The intro is usually played right at the top with the rhythm section. Sometimes it's played twice. There's a record by Marcus Printup where the band plays it twice. And it's played at various tempos. It's sometimes played as an outro, too, so look out. And it fits in the first position of the electric bass and the upright bass really well. And check out the YouTube video. So here's the intro 
to uh, Joe Henderson's Record of Me. And, da, and you'll hear the horn player, keys player play the head, and then you're into changes at that point. And it's a Latin tune like Night in Tunisia. So those are required bass lines, part one. There's a number of them. These are the ones that came to mind to me the other day. They get called quite a bit. And check them out and be aware and get them under your fingers. Like I said, they're fun to play. I mean, I was revisiting on them and thinking about when I first learned them how, I, how excited it was. And if they're still exciting to play. So this has been episode 009. I'm your host, Phil, for Base Case. I'll talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.